Hello there. Alright, um, this is a video. I'm going to show you how I uh, disassemble and reassemble the hot end on one of my 3D printers. Uh, this guy right here has been giving me some issues. He's not printing. He's like, he's like off and on, kind of printing good and then printing bad. And I've raised the speed, and raising the speed fixes the problem, but as a result of that you get like stringing and ringing, or not stringing, but like rings on your part, because if it's printing really quickly, things jitter and jerk a lot more on your printer, unless you have everything really fastened down. I don't, because that's a tremendous amount of tedious uh, adjusting and stuff. I don't have time for that. So I print really slow. I printed about 30 millimeters per second, which is probably r too slow for some people. Um... But, I've been doing that for every single one of my printers. All of them. All of them print at 30 millimeters per second. That one never gives me an issue over there. And the one at the end doesn't give me an issue either. But this one is conveniently having problems. And I have replaced this, the PTF tube, that's a new uh, Capricorn tube. I've replaced all the couplers, I've replaced the one uh, coming from the extruder there, I've replaced this one, I've replaced the hot, uh, this, not the hot end itself, but the nozzle. I've done just about everything I could possibly do to this printer. I even deep cleaned this uh, this heat sink here because sometimes you get grime that kind of builds up inside the heat sink. After like four months of using the printer without any maintenance, it was pretty sticky in there. So I kind of cleaned all that out, cleaned the fan, cleaned everything, assembled it all back. It was making beautiful prints. I mean, perfect looking prints here. I don't know if I have a... No, I threw it away. But it was a nice, silky smooth. And uh, it was very confusing to see that it was still having extrusion problems. It was—it almost looked like it was clogging. So the point of the video is I'm going to show you how I disassemble the hot end to try to suss out problems. And yeah, and because I've almost run out of options, I'm going to try to swap out this nozzle for a new nozzle. Not because this nozzle is worn out or anything, but mainly. I'm going to go ahead and preheat it, too. Do, do, do. And so it might as well just uh, switch it to the same ones that all my other printers use. Uh, you might be, I might be able to show it to you here. Here, these are a couple of nozzles that I have. They're really old and beat up, but you'll be able to see the difference in shapes uh, for both of these nozzles, if I can get them right next to each other without the uh, camera having a hard time focusing on them. Ah, uh, this is really difficult. Ah! Uh, all right, I don't know how well you can see it. This is the one I use on all my printers. This is the one that this printer came pre-installed with. It was a nozzle that was shaped like this. All my other printers use this. This printer used this. Maybe if I just replace it with this one, it'll be better because I guess technically the thread is a little bit, it's a little bit longer. It's a little bit of a longer nozzle. Gives it maybe you know, another couple of extra millimeters down further from the, uh, the heat block. Maybe that causes something to happen. Oh, I don't know. But first things first, we got to. I'm actually debating on doing something else. So you got to learn as you go. You try to ask somebody on the internet how to help you. Nine times out of ten, they'll point you in the right direction, but ultimately what they tell you to do is not verbatim exactly what will work for you. Because everyone has a different printer under different environments and different circumstances. There's so many factors that go into uh, the way a printer prints. It can be as, as simple as a mechanical issue. It could just be, well, your motor's not engaging with the extruder, therefore it's not extruding. It could be simple things like that. Or your filament's tangled or... Our motor's dying. It's it's anything. It's anything with these. All right. But first things first. I'm gonna while it's heated up, I'm gonna try to remove this nozzle from the end here without touching it. And I got a special socket for this nozzle because this particular one is a little bit wider than my standard ones. So I'm gonna take my little pair of pliers here ah! and try to get at this nozzle first. First, let's remove this little silicon sock here. Now, I, I have been improving. It's gotten better. And since I've had to disassemble this thing maybe three or four times, and I I, I don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss sometimes with... And it's weird, because I just when you think you know everything and you feel comfortable doing maintenance on your printer, there's always some issue that just, just throws you a, a, a monkey wrench in your whole philosophy. philosophy. All right, here we go. Got my little socket around the nozzle. I'm going to twist. 
There you go. Pops free really easy, especially because I preheated the uh, the hot end, so it'll just come free. I don't even have to use the pliers anymore. It's just spinning freely. All right, and then this holds the nozzle really well. Oh, look at that. You see that? You see that right there? Almost looks like uh, something burnt on the end of the nozzle. That's black. Black stuff. So that indicates to me that there was a leak. <sighs> Just because nozzles are a dime a dozen, I'm, chuck I'm chucking this nozzle right here. I don't care if it hasn't had much wear on it, and the way I dispose of hot nozzles is I put them in a little ceramic, uh, little ceramic bowl. It's hard to tell with, uh, how many are in there. There's a lot in there. So, I'm gonna pop a new nozzle into this guy, but before I do that, you notice there was black stuff on there. That means I gotta take this off and uh, figure out what was going on. So now at this point, I'm gonna cool this down. I'm going on to my printer settings and clicking cool down so that the hot end, the heater block will not heat, uh, constantly maintain heat. I don't wanna burn myself. Burning yourself is not a good option. I'm gonna go ahead and whip out one of these newer nozzles here. I need to get some more. Place this guy. I don't trust him. Okay. Now, I'm gonna pop off these guys here. I do need to remove. Oh, sorry, you can't see anything at all. I do need to remove the uh, the PTF tube, this blue tube right here. But some, removing this uh, this heat shroud with the fan uh, helps to get that part off. Actually, no, it doesn't. What am I saying? Don't listen to me. You just push down on this coupler. Well, remove your little clip that keeps it from slipping. Push down on this little coupler ring, and if it comes out easily, then your tube is still good. You just have to adjust it. All right, my tube came right out. That means it's still good. Ah, there's some black on the end of the tube. I don't know how well it's coming across on camera, but you can see against my hand that it's blue. You see the blue and there's black right there. That's not inside the tube, that's on the outer ring as well. So what this is telling me is that somehow or another this thing leaked. Maybe because it's not cut perfectly square? I don't know, it could be anything. So what I'm gonna do to try to fix that is to recut this. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on camera in front of you right now. And uh, do, do, do. I got these, these PTF tube cutters. You can get them on Amazon real cheap. Sometimes it even comes with a tube for you. And I'm just going to cut this thing a good, like, inch or so above where that is. Because I don't trust this entire, this entire tube. And hopefully we're going to get a straight cut out of this. Because maybe that was all that was messing it up. Maybe it's just because this thing wasn't straight cut. Even though I used this thing the first time. But sometimes if you're cutting on a curve or cutting on the end of the tube, it'll curve and it won't be a straight cut. Just little things will throw it off. All right. Got that taken care of. So there's another thing I want to adjust with this heat block. I'm going to move it down further away from the heat sink because I think the closer the heat block is to the heat sink, the uh, the more the heat gets transferred up the tube and causes the filament to expand due to the heat, and then it causes it to stop itself in the tube because there's not enough room in that tube. The tube doesn't expand unless it's, unless it's subjected to extreme force, which this printer does not do. I can do it by hand, but I don't want to risk that. All right, this is currently 87 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, ah, it's, it's hot enough to where if you brush against it, you don't, you're gonna burn yourself, but just, you can touch it and you know that it's, it's hot. Okay. I want to, Take this heat block, you see how the little gap right between this and this? I want to move this down like one turn, because I think that's how it was on the printer to begin with. I made the decision, in my experimenting, taking this thing apart over and over and over again, I was trying all kinds of different things to assemble this to get it to work, and it just wasn't working. So I'm going to just put it back. I, I moved it up here thinking that, oh, maybe if it's closer to the heat sink, it'll distribute heat better. Nah, same problem. And so I'm just gonna move it back down to where it was. The heat sink is pretty hot. If I had a thermal camera, you'd really see what was going on. I'm so sorry. I forget that I'm filming sometimes. I'm not used to this. Uh, just bear with me. 
I'm going to grip the underside with some pliers here. I don't want that to fall on me. That would hurt. All right. Got it. Heat block ain't going anywhere. Now we got to... Now here's what I'm going to do. Ah! Don't damage anything while doing this. It's very easy to, to, to fray this wire and destroy your heating element. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and turn it. And I'm going to turn it left, which is this way, to try to loosen it by like one. One turn. All right. And you see the space between this, this heat sink and the heat block got a little bit bigger. So I'm just increasing that gap a little bit, and then I'm going to reinstall it. All right, that heat sink is good and secure. I don't feel like I damaged this cable in any way, but you never know sometimes. All right, now that that's taken care of, there's something else we need to do. The new nozzle. We've already taken it out of the bag. Here it is, a nice shiny brass, new brass nozzle. Never been used before. We're gonna screw that into the bottom of the heat sink. So now we don't need this extra large socket. We can use the socket that we use for all of our nozzles. Goodbye. This one here. Do I know what size it is? No. Nope. And I don't care. It works. Yes, I'm very primitive. I don't remember things like measurements. I just go by feeling. Okay. I'm gonna just try to screw this into the bottom here, and then this heat block is probably gonna want to screw with it at some point, so I'll have to grip, grip it with some uh, little pliers. Where'd they go? Oh, there they are. Pliers ready, and I will heat this up, and I'll give it a hot turn when it's hot because it, uh, there's a certain extent that you can go with before it's um, before it wants to stick because it's not pliable. And you don't want any leaks. You don't want leaks in your system. All right, give it a good, yeah, good, good twist. All right. Actually, there is something I want to confirm. I'm gonna look straight down into there with a flashlight, see if there's anything, any blockage that's, this is gonna blind the camera. I'm gonna see if there's any blockage inside of the tube. Because if I can see the end of the brass nozzle on the other side, then we're good. And yes, I can see the end of the brass nozzle, which means there's nothing, there's no black gunk in there. There's no ball of filament that's stopping that. So that means, and here's also something I'm gonna do, is a little neat trick. Loosen this uh, coupler by just like a quarter turn. And then feed this bad boy down in there. Let's see how far it's going. It's only going about that far. No. I'm gonna do this just so that this fan is out of my way. Make sure my wires are good and tame. They're not gonna get kinked up or damaged when I do this. Sorry, my arm is in your way at all times. Wouldn't be a video without that. Okay, okay. That's fine for now. Um, I feel like this tube isn't going all the way down in there. I can feel it not going. So I'm going to take a little rubber pad that I have. I know that's not going all the way down in there. That's not touching the nozzle at all. It's getting close, but it's not touching the nozzle in there. What's going on? Hmm? What's going on with that? Sorry you gotta sit here and watch the whole song and dance. I'm gonna cut this little guy here that was in my way. He's nice when he's managing the cable but not when I'm trying to work with it. All right, let's try this again. Down. Ah, ah there we go. Yeah, that's all it was. Just took some, some force. Okay, I'm willing to bet we're on the bottom there, but just in case we're not, remember how we loosened that by like a quarter turn? If we, let's put this piece on there too so that the hose doesn't slip up. We want it, by turning it 
back, it'll grind the hose back down into the nozzle so that we're sure that there's a good solid seal there. And there we go. So that thing right there is pushing that thing even closer to the nozzle. Just in case there was a little gunk in there, it's not going to disrupt anything. I'm just going to turn it even more just because. Alright. That hose is good on there. I'm not worried about it. Alright, that screw's in there good. Yes, it's supposed to be a little bit crooked like that because this fan here actually hangs a little bit lower than this metal piece. So that is intentional. And what we're going to do after we get this on there is we're going to heat it up. Actually, I can go ahead and heat it up now to save some time. Alright, pretty satisfied that that's on there. Now what I'm going to do is attack the end of the nozzle. Alright, now that it's hot, I'm going to go ahead and um, grip that heating element again. And I'm going to turn this just to tighten it a little bit more. There we go. Good, nice squeeze on that. You really have to tighten this. Hold on, I just... I'm paranoid. I've taken this thing apart so much, I really don't want to have to come back in here and do it again. So I'm just going to make sure this thing is good and tight. Because I can be a real wimpy, a wimpy person sometimes and just stop right before... Okay, that is solid. That is solid. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm going to apply this little rubber sock. This printer actually didn't come with one. It didn't come with one stock on it. I had to add one from my supply. How dare you, TiVo. Okay, I want to be careful with this. I don't want to touch that nozzle and burn my finger. Uh, see, you, the camera, you're in the exact perfect place I need to be to do my work. Okay. Alright, I think I got that little sock on there. The sock doesn't hold on very well, to be honest. It just, like, it holds on that side really well, probably because it's against a wall, but this side, it likes to kind of drift a little bit, but it never falls off. It never gets in the way of the print, but it does just like to slouch, which is a little a bummer, but that's okay. Okay. Now, we've reassembled it. You watched me do it on camera. Nothing, nothing too crazy about what I did. I do things, I'm very cautious very careful most of the time. Now, I am going to hit the cool down, give it the cool down command so that it cools down the hot end. While we wait to do that, I'm going to clean up my workspace a little bit. I'll put my little Allen wrench away, close up my bag, put those away, put my screw away, that's good and tight, put my PTF cutter away, put my wrench away, um, we don't need this anymore. Oh, I guess I could put my wrench away as well, the other wrench. <laughs> the adjustable one. Alright, my flashlight goes somewhere else. I always keep that here so I can do close-ups on a lot of these prints. Because uh, most of the time I come in here and the lighting in here is dreadful, so I can't tell based on just turning the ceiling lights on. Alright, this is a little, uh, carton I got from, uh, I think it was a microcomputer. And it came with this, this sort of hollowed out cavity, and I just keep all my tools in it and I transport them in this little thing. I want to put a little, little tie right there. I hope that's the last time I need to take this printer apart. Uh, and I hope this video serves as a demonstration on what to do so that when I mess up on this in the future, I can watch this video and I'll be like, yes, that's what I needed to do. Just like that, because it worked so well that time work every time, right? Wrong! Okay. Temperature and weather and humidity affect all everything. There's all kinds of factors. Now, now that it's cooled down and I feel comfortable enough to do this, I'm going to reset it. And that just means power cycling the printer. Turning it on, turning it off. I'm going to wait a few seconds. Turn it back on. And the reason to do that is it's healthy to do that right after you change your uh, nozzle because in my in my practice, if you monkey around with any of that stuff in there, it just throws something off in some small way to where as soon as you hit print, it'll have like a heating error or something 
And sometimes it'll even happen while you're engaging with that stuff. It'll say, oh, thermal runaway, and it'll just not print anything. So I like to reset it and then turn it back on, and that guarantees that that won't happen. At least most of the time. <laughs> okay. Now the next step is to level the bed. Now my bed's obviously has a lot of uh, hairspray and adhesive stuff caked up on it, but I scrape it off for the most part, and it's... As long as you really focus on, because I only print maybe one or three pieces at a time, unless it's a Megatron scope or stock set that like uses this space, this is the only space on the bed I care about. I don't care about this, 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 or this. People who tell you to measure it based on that, that, and that, and that are insane. Unless you're printing giant Iron Man armor pieces, you don't need to be thinking about all four corners. I just care about this center part right here and whether or not that'll work for me. We are going to auto home. Now, because that nozzle's clean, I don't have to clean any filament out of it before trying this. I want to lube up that rod right there. It sometimes helps, but not often. Ah, you see that lead screw right there? It goes all the way down. Sometimes that gets gunked up with material, be it dirt or dust or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with a, uh, with just one of my blue shop cloths here. It's not a perfect clean, but it is something. There's a lot of gunk around the, uh, the base of this lead screw as well. And this is stuff, you see that? This is just stuff that, uh, collects on it. It's grease, too. Because you do grease this up, because it is a metal part that has to feed into another metal part and creates friction. Okay, I cleaned a lot of that up. Now, I'm going to apply some WD-40. Taking care not to get that on the motor or anything. I know, you're supposed to take off the lead screw and put it in a drill. And just take a towel and just spin the drill and it cleans off all that junk, but... I'm not taking that off. I don't think that's the main thing that's affecting this printer right now. The main thing was a lot of this hot end business. But that's just a little bit extra that I decided to do just because I want to give this thing the best possible chance of success. And here we go. I'm going to level the bed. Aha. Uh -huh. And I'm using my ears. My ears are my most important tool at this point. I'm trying to hear whether or not that brass nozzle is actually scraping the bed. It is scraping the bed. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to automatically lower it. And I'm... Okay, it's not scraping the bed anymore. Alright. I can hear it scraping there. You're supposed to use a piece of paper. So I'll get a little piece of paper, put it under there, and figure out what's going on. This will tell me. You need to be able to at least slide the piece of paper and feel a little bit of grip. And that tells you that it's level right here, where it's hard to pull. That's not level. Lower that. Lowering. Lowering. Really high in the back. Lower. Let's, low, let's raise the front just a hair. Okay, let's lower the front just a hair. I didn't think that would have a huge effect, but it did. All right, the center of the bed is the thing we care about the most. Lower. There we go. That right there is maybe a little bit... Okay, that's perfect. And then the back isn't perfect. Leveling your bed is a very tedious process. I, I'm not going to lie about how freaking tedious this kind of thing is. Alright, the back is level. I'd say the front's fine. That's acceptable. Right, let's check this side versus left or right. Okay, that side's fine. Alright, I think it's level. It's perfect. You want to do that every time you reinstall the hot end in any way because it can change heights very subtly and it'll throw off your entire thing. You could risk damaging your bed or damaging your nozzle and I never want to run into those problems ever. Alright, I'm going to set the home offsets again. 
All right, now that the offsets are set, I'm going to load some filament in. Let's move the Z upwards because we're gonna to have to feed some black through it. I'm gonna raise it up to about 150, which is where my normal operating height is if I wanna ma do maintenance on it. Oh, one, one little thing left. I keep a toothbrush in here for reasons. I don't brush my teeth with this. I use this to clean the little wheel on the back of the extruder because sometimes it gets little flakes of plastic in there. But the very least I can do is blow those little plastic particles out of there. All right, now we can put the tools up. The rest of the printers are doing great, by the way. You hear them over there singing a song. They're doing amazing. Uh, now, grab my little cutters. We're going to preheat the printer, get it ready for to receive some filament. I'm going to load this in here. Sorry, you probably can't see what's going on. All right, we are inside the tube. Filament is being pushed up, and it's almost into the hot end. Okay, now I got to wait for that to reach uh, at least 165 Celsius before the plastic will actually melt. Uh, okay, now we're going to move the, ex the filament through the hot end with the extruder motor to see if it extrudes like we want it to. And I'll bring you down there so you can see the action. Seems like it's extruding good, but I'm going to make it extrude again. There it goes. It's stuck to the side of the nozzle, but once it goes down, it'll go straight. There it goes. It's coming out. straight line all right and then once I'm confident that material can flow through I'm gonna cool it down if I ever need to do regular maintenance on this printer that's about what I do to get everything working again not counting any belt problems or anything to do the, the majority of your issues are gonna happen right here right in here that's where all your problems are gonna be on a daily, on a, on a monthly basis. You need to do that at least once every few months or depending on whenever you start seeing issues with your print that you can diagnose by doing that and fixing it. So, we're going to do our first test print to see how it goes. And guess what we're gonna print first? We're gonna start printing Megatron silencer because I need Megatron kits and I need them now. If I have to get a Megatron kit, I will make one of those guys print it, but I would prefer this one to do it, because he was the one that was printing those. Every single Megatron kit I almost ever sold was printed on this printer. Amazing, right? It's crazy to see this printer not working now. All right, offsets have been set. And let's print a silencer and hope that it happens. I'm going to set a timer on my phone. While you're here, I'm going to show you what I use on my phone. So there's this little app here that I downloaded on the Play Store. It's an, it's Android. There's this little app here. If you click on it, it's called Multi-Timer. That's what it's called in the App Store. I threw the developer a few bucks and paid for the app to get the full version because having multiple timers that I can time and run in the background on my phone while I'm doing other things is amazing. So they're perfect for these printers. So you can see how long it takes each part or set of parts to print and they'll go off for me but in this case I want to oh the silencer was still running because I came in here and stopped it let's reset that start the silencer again from scratch looks like the site has another hour 30 minutes left and the back guard for Jetfire has another three hours left and while my phone's kind of uh, when it's asleep it'll actually show me look right here it'll show me these timers I can even uh, expand that a little bit and it'll show me all the timers and even like a projected um, like an estimation as to when the time will finish so target time 11 p.m. is when that site will finish or December 17th if it's gonna be the next day if like 5 5 a.m. Uh, I doubt that this thing will even it will make it far till 5 a.m. before I shut it down because it'll fail uh, back guard yeah three hours that'll be tomorrow so a very helpful app, multi-timer. Uh, that's what I use to time all these printers, including the resin printer over there. It's great. Hello. There's my washing machine. All right. So 
This is an, uh, a progress report showing you what that printer is doing as a result of me uh, having finished the operation I did prior. If you have an eye for what finished 3D printed parts, um, what the finished parts look like and what the supports are, then you'll probably see that this thing is actually doing pretty well. The results so far are very, very promising. Look how, look at that sheen. Look how nice that looks. That's shiny. This is bits of Megatron's uh, silencer here. I'm very happy with the way that's turning out. I don't see any signs of uh, under extrusion or anything like that. No signs of clogging. So I, I imagine it's because it's a combination of me having recut the tube because I think it was leaking somehow, really tightening that nozzle on there to the tube and to the, the other side as well, like tightening it from both ends, really just compressing that in so that there was no leaks and stops the, the, the gap from filling with the plastic. I, I'm hoping that this solved the case. I'll post a final clip of, what, of how this results and how this turns out when it's done, but I think that... Uh, based on all the other times I've done this, and I've printed this particular thing uh, a few times, just because it's, it's, it's a relatively small print, simple, um, I've printed this a few times over when it was making mistakes, and I could kind of measure at what point it would start giving me problems, and this is as far as it's ever made it without a mistake. And that must mean something. I'm hoping that this thing is fine and I can print Megatron parts again. I have dubbed this my Megatron uh, printer. This is what this is all I want this printer to print. It, this one is responsible. I may have said this earlier. This one is responsible for almost all of the Megatron parts I've ever made. Uh, this one over here. Let's just take a tour. So that's the result of that printer. I'm just going to give you a little, a little share something extra. This is printing some Jetfire parts now. It's got some red filament in there. I believe it's printing the back card. Uh, this one over here. Ooh, something exciting. Uh, you know what this part is. It is Galvatron's sight. I've moved on to printing these. This is what I mean by, uh, I may have said this or uh, shared this at one point or not. Wow, that really bounces off the light with purple. But uh, I'm always looking to improve the quality of my prints. And in practice, I used to print a lot of these at once. I used to print about four at a time. And same for the connector pieces, I print four at a time. Doing that really substantially hurts the surface quality of the print. Not by a lot, like not by a huge amount. I sold them because they looked decent. If any of them looked bad, I threw them out. In fact, the ones I throw out, let me show you where they go. Some people in the world might be happy with some of these parts, but I refuse to sell a single one of these. So I test these parts, I make sure they're as perfect as they can be before I sell them to anyone else. Yeah, look at this part right here, this Galatron rifle. You might not notice, but this guy right here is like a little, he's kind of shifted a little bit. On this back, this should be a straight line right here, it's kind of this way. And I was just like, nope, ain't selling that. This is one of the free... <laughs> This was a free one that I found on the internet and I, that someone else had designed. So I printed it out just to kind of see what I thought about it if, it, if it held up. Sorry, the scope broke off, so it's probably not really a fair comparison. Hell, it isn't a fair comparison to begin with. I curse a lot on this show, just deal with it. Um, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this one's way better. Even though I'm not selling this. I'd be happy to give these away for free, but I just don't know how to do it. I don't want to sell somebody an inferior product. Like, I won't even charge five bucks for this. I don't want to charge for this. The ones I make now are resin printed. I mean, look, the quality on them is much better. Look, there's a Megatron silencer. Anyway, this box is full of stuff that I refuse to sell. And that includes, uh, occasionally, some of the pieces that were done from the mass production uh, printing. Like, even this one had some little flaws in it that I don't like. And I won't sell those. So I found that it, you can get much higher quality parts if you just print them by themselves, one at a time. And the way that works is, uh, the reason that's the case is because the nozzle has to travel from one part to another, just kind of like Spider-Manning its way across. And it'll sometimes string out the filament 
from the side of the part as it travels to the next part and then enters the next part to make that layer and then it strings along and enters the next part and it'll create these little blobs on the sides of the the, the lines and the corners of the prints on, on the parts that where it's traveled around and maybe three of the four parts may have turned out good but there's like one that's like a rotten egg that you have to throw out and that just I don't want to print stuff like that I don't want to throw out half of my stuff Printing them one at a time, I found, gave me much better quality looking parts. Even though it technically requires more labor because I have to come in here every two hours, three hours or so and set another part going. I'd rather do that and have higher quality pieces than to try to mass produce them and have almost all of them looking less high quality. I mean, they turned, so they turned out great. for like, getting it looking as good as it can possibly be. When I say I print these to the best of my ability, I mean that. I print them to the best of my ability. All right, that was me rambling. Ah! I hope this turns out great. We have high hopes for you. No, there is another Skywalker. That boy was our last. Alright, sorry. Okay, bye.